Hey, what's going on? It is Sunday. It is time for Mailbag, and we have a crew here that's going to be able to help with Mailbag because we've all read the questions. <laughs> Right over here, it's Dennis Sang. What's up, man? What's up? I had so much fun on Friday. I decided to sleep here. And then I had so much fun on Saturday. I decided to sleep here. Right. And now I'm here for and now Sunday's, you're here. Sunday's mail. Yeah, I snuck right in. And joining us again, Sinead DeFries. How are you? Good. And wearing the same clothes because I loved my outfit so much yesterday. <laughs> yeah, see? I was good. You guys are great actors. Okay. <laughs> uh, a lot of questions that have been going out there. A lot of questions that we were looking at. Love the, a lot of the new suggestions that have been out there as well. Sinead, what are they saying out there? Brian writes, what's going on, Collider crew? I've been a fan since the AMC days, and I have never missed a show. Keep up the amazing work. I have a comment and a question that has to do with the first image that we got to see from Ghosts in the Shell starring Scarlett Johansson. I personally thought it was a good casting choice, and I think it fits well for what she has been doing in her previous roles. Now, what I don't understand is why most people would think Asian actors or actresses should be cast for films like this. My question to you all is, in your opinion, do you think this was a good role for Scarlett Johansson? I know everything that's been going on with this and the backlash from it what I can tell you is that this is happening a lot in Hollywood right now just in general whether it be something like Gods of Egypt or uh, or, or that Aloha or anything that keeps happening where these roles that maybe these Caucasian actors shouldn't be getting they are getting now I can't speak on Ghost in the Shell because I don't know the property I, I, I know that it's very popular I know that um, when she was initially announced that she was going to be in it people were actually thought it was a good idea to have her in it because she could fit the role but then this issue is now coming up do you how do you see it Dennis well I mean I don't know if the the, the guy asking the question is being facetious or not about why an Asian actor or actress would play this role because it's a Japanese property right. starring uh, the character is Japanese so I don't know maybe he's just not informed about the mm -hmm. property and, and that's why um, for me it's I think some people misunderstood me the other day thinking I was advocating for whitewashing or something like that, or I didn't think that it mattered, because it does matter. Um, I was just saying that at least from a financial standpoint, you could at least make the argument, like someone like a Scarlett Johansson could, at least financially for the studio, be better. Right. I was talking about how then you get these other roles like a Tilda Swinton or a Joel Edgerton in these roles that I know those actors, they're good actors, no one knows who they are. Right. Like overseas, you're not, oh, the new Joel Edgerton movie, that's that's not happening. So that's where I get I get more upset. Um, it's all about opportunity and chances. You have to give people opportunities. Will Smith was not a big star before he became Will Smith. Mm -hmm. Somebody had to take a chance on him. So you have to do that for uh, different races of, of all kinds. So I just feel like it's a, it's a missed opportunity because I know there are certain stars that, that, that bring in the audience, but every day it's getting smaller and smaller. It's becoming yeah. all about the property. Yeah, it's definitely all about the property. And I think that it's hard sometimes too, because I think you bring up a great point where you get someone like Scarlett Johansson, who is one of the, uh, one of the female actresses right now that can carry an action mm -hmm. movie and that can get butts and seats. So it makes sense financially why, why you put her in a movie like that. Um, and then talking about someone like Will Smith, Will Smith, they took a chance on him for sure, like in the Independence Day, but they also had a cast around him. And it's not just because he's black, it's just because he was kind of yeah. unknown. They put a cast around him like a, a Jeff Goldblum and a, even a Randy Quaid and all these other, there were these big names. Because in, Independence Day is really what, what blew, he, he had other acting opportunities, yeah. but that's the one yeah. that made him a superstar. Um, so this movie, I don't know if it lends itself to the, the risk on an, un, on an unknown. Yeah. Now, that's not to say you can't put in another, um, someone who's not white, put them in that's a star. And, but I mean, as far as an unknown actor, whether it be black, white, woman, whoever it is, it's a tougher it's a tougher thing for the studio to do because they don't have a, it's not only it's like a big huge cast with a lot of stars in this movie and who's directing it do we know um, I'm not too sure and there's not a big director that that's a, kind of attached to it, I don't think anyway too so it I see I I, I can see the argument on both sides but again I, it there certainly is a problem where a lot of these times when there's a role that is right for whether it be an Asian um, actor or an actress or a black actor and actress that it's going to uh, white actors if you look at Gods of Egypt mm -hmm. and what's the other one? The uh, Gods and Kings or Exodus Gods and Exodus, Kings. Exodus Gods and Kings and stuff like that because that's when you get too scared of well we need all these box we need box office draws and we need noticeable actors but it's like yeah but this is unrealistic. Yeah, and then you had those big quote unquote box office stars for Exodus Gods and Kings didn't make money. Right. So, didn't do anything. so right. you're you're proving you know it's not it's not a foolproof plan. Say what you want about Mel Gibson when you can say a lot. 
Um, Apocalypto is one of those movies that like nobody's in that movie that you know. And it's granted it was it was him before a lot of the the nuttiness kind of came out, and it was him coming off of the stuff that he'd done with Passion of the Christ, a uh, very successful movie, as well as Braveheart, very successful movie. And he put the whole movie is dubbed. I mean, you know, it's a foreign language film. Um, and it's also he unknown actors and actresses in it too. And it worked and it fit the role. So there, it's a different circumstance, but yeah. you can't make, it can be done. Uh, the movie didn't necessarily crush the box no, office. No, but Passion of the Christ. I mean, June Jim Caviezel, Caviezel is not a known yeah, star. True. You know? But Jesus is. Yeah, well, you know, you, but it's true. You yeah. could put, but it's like who's playing Jesus, and you got someone like Jim Caviezel, who's a great actor. You put a great actor in there, um, but then again, we don't. Do we know? Uh, I don't know. I'm not getting. I'm not going down this road. Let's, <laughs> right, let's, wait, wait, wait. Did you hear though? The, I don't know if this is true or not, but the rumors were that they took uh, shots of Scarlett Johansson and tried to asianify her no, through visual effects i don't know if this is true i just read a rumor about that and let's let's that's not do worse. that yeah, that's then, worse yeah so yeah. yeah let's not do that all right what's next joseph writes hey guys love the show do you think we will ever see a movie based on robert Heinlein's classic sci-fi novel stranger in a strange land um i don't know but it's it would certainly be fun to do i mean if you're not familiar with it um it is story of Valentine Michael Smith, a human who comes to Earth in a early, early adulthood after being born on the planet Mars and raised by Martians. It could be fun, cool. Sci- I mean, I'm all for sci-fi. Anytime a cool sci-fi movie comes out, and and especially based off of a classic novel, like that's to me. I don't understand why it hasn't been made. All of the other remakes and stuff that has been made, this one I don't believe there's ever been a movie on it. I has there? Haven't. I don't remember, but it's it's one of those. It's a classic sci-fi book that I haven't yeah, read, but but hearing the synopsis and the in the story of it, it sounds interesting. I think the reason why it hasn't been made is because Hollywood is scared of Mars. I mean, like <laughs> all those movies, you know, like John Carter from Mars. They took right. Mars out of the title. Now we had The Martian. That was a pretty big that hit. Works, yeah. So so maybe they're going to be more open to it. But I know before, remember like Mars Attacks, uh, John Carter from Mars. They took the Mars out, and all these old Mars movies. They just Never so did any well. Funny how they do that. It's like because it's, it's like the only thing it had anything to do with the story or yeah. the way the things are performances. It's like it has nothing to do with the title. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the title. It's, it's, it's execution of stuff. You can make a cool movie. You can put it anywhere. Uh, look, there's a movie coming out about McDonald's, and it looks yeah. great. All right, what's next? Sean writes, "Hey there, Collider Movie Talk or Collider Mailbag. What month in mid or late 2016 do you suppose that Disney will finally release Pirates of the Caribbean 5's teaser trailer online?" When is that thing supposed to come out? Uh, in 2017, uh, May 2017. I don't know when the teaser trailer is going to come out. <sighs> Sometime in October, yeah. maybe. I, I peg it for this fall. Yeah. Uh, I mean, personally, I, I stopped watching them. I, yeah. I, I watched the first three, and then because the second and third one, I didn't really care for. I never watched the fourth one. So, and I love the first one. The first yeah, one first I thought one, was a lot sure. of fun. Yeah. It was surprising, but then. I don't. I, I, they haven't recaptured that magic, so I, I'm not that interested. Do you care about Pirates of the Caribbean? No. No. I right. cared about it once. Once upon a time, I really yeah, did. Yeah, like the first one. Yeah. Yeah, and then it just—it's like too much, and it's like they—they're just cash cow after cash cow. It's like uh, they—that they, movie stopped being about anything except trying to make money. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. What's next? Nathan writes, "Hey everyone at Collider. When I'm watching movie shows on Collider or even Screen Junkies, I always hear the term." B movie. I was curious, what is a B movie, and what qualifications does a movie need to be called a B movie? Thanks, guys, and have a great day. Dennis, I'm gonna let you take this one. I know you love these questions and the explanations. I love hearing your explanations on them, so please. Well, I mean, a B movie is basically a low-budgeted movie that isn't supposed to be a indie film or art house film. It's not done out of, you know, I mean, it's, it might be done out of passion, but it's not like a, a draw, a serious drama. They kind of have lower budget like costumes and special effects and some of the acting talent in it isn't exactly the greatest i mean you had like what was it like when tarantino and rodriguez did the their grindhouse movies Mm -hmm. they had 
the the one the planet terror was that Rodriguez yeah. one? Yeah, that would be considered like a, a B movie. But that it, one was done on purpose yeah. though, so, so it's, that's it's why, a little tougher. That's why I don't consider it's not, like, tr- it's not true B movie, right. but in the spirit like of Machete, a B-movie. And Machete yeah, yeah. Like, I don't I don't I don't consider those like they're like homages to B movies, yeah. like because like that's those guys love the classic B movie, like Swamp Thing is a B, I mean that's Swamp yeah. Thing, uh, Toxic Avenger, yes, Toxic is Avenger. a B movie. Um, all those Roger Corman movies, yeah, all those old school movies. Though that you can find many of them they're probably all, the entirety they're probably all on youtube because who cares um so I, it's it's a matter that you see you brought up like robert Rodriguez and mm-hmm. tarantino there's like there's a lot of these kind of love letters to b movies now that i don't consider mm-hmm. b movies for sure but you can find them just google it would you consider our, our friends over here at uh what are, what are they called asylum yeah, um yeah. they make these really quite honestly crappy movies mm-hmm. for really cheap but they've kind of gone to the point where they know they're going to be crappy. They yeah. do it on purpose, like Sharknado or anything mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. And that's the shtick of them. So normally you would think of it as a B movie, but now they're kind of doing it on purpose. Would you consider them a B movie? No, it's still? the same thing. I find it the same way. Like they know what they're doing. Like I felt like a lot of these old school B movies, like they're making movies. Yeah. They're trying yeah. to make these movies. And even though they're not going to be the best movies, they're still trying. And it turned out to be a B movie. Mm-hmm. But it, it's the other ones, like you, like you mentioned, they're all just like. We know we're making we're making a bad movie on purpose. Yeah. So So Plan Nine from Outer Space, Ed Wood, that's definitely a B movie. Yes. Then. Absolutely. All right, what's next? John writes, when people list some of their favorite movies of all time, it's usually always movies from decades ago, like Citizen Kane, The Godfather, or Lawrence of Arabia. But are there any movies released in the last seven to ten years that have made your all-time list? Some of mine are Scott Pilgrim, The Avengers, Winter Soldier, Inception, and The Social Network. Thank you, and keep up the great work. The last seven to ten years, there's two DiCaprio movies in my in my top, for sure. and that would, Or even, yeah, ten years. Um, I, Inception is in there and Wolf of Wall Street mm-hmm. is in there for me those two are absolutely you know I was going to say um, Eternal Sunshine Spotless Mind but that's 2003 I think or, or something yeah like it was that. a little bit older yeah so but within the last like 7-10 years I'd pick those two uh, I have uh, The Wrestler good one Birdman There Will Be Blood and a French film called A Prophet which okay. is kind of like it's have you ever seen it mm-hmm. you should check it out because it's, it's like a it's a prison slash gangster movie where mm. this guy goes to prison he's like doesn't know anybody but he rises through the ranks to eventually become kind of almost like a the godfather of the oh, prison cool. it, it's badass you should check it out that kind of reminds me as you say that too i think the raid 2 is one of those movies that i i don't know if i put it in my top 10 but it's in my top like that movie just did everything that the first raid did and more yeah. and it became like a gangster film and it was like they felt like Scarface the story was a lot better yeah. oh it was way better but it and i loved the, the i love the raid but the raid too just it was i don't know that scene in the kitchen like mm-hmm. everything but Sinead, do you have one in the last like seven or ten years you think you put into the top um well i would say grand budapest hotel i really loved oh. and i will also say wolf of wall street too um i was just talking to my sister about this we just watched it for the first time like three weeks ago oh, right. Really? Really, isn't it? I'd never seen it, yeah. and she said this might be one of the best movies I've ever seen in my yeah, life. We so were like good. hanging on to every single that, word. That, Get that, the loot! I couldn't believe I'd never seen it. I was like, how? Like, oh, I just, so I don't know. I just this, never got the around scene to with the, the the old loots with the the was it the Lamborghini or whatever? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I oh. also watched that one with my entire family. So. That's not a good one. That's not a good one for the whole people. family. I always find myself yeah. in those situations, yeah. you guys. Uh, okay, what's next? Scott writes, a massive hi from South Wales, Collider team. I've been watching since the early days on AMC. I just wanted to know your views on the new movie, Hardcore Henry. And what do you think this means for first-person view films? Even though this is not a film based on a video game, do you think this will help the future of video game films? Also, I would like to know if any of you would be coming to the UK anytime soon. I would love Love to see a panel at a Comic Con or even a stand up show from your very own Mark Ellis. Thank you very much for your time. Well, as far as the uh, going to the UK, we were hoping at one point that we were going to be going to Star Wars Celebration. Yeah. And just mm-hmm. because it's so close to Comic Con, I just don't think it's going to be able yeah. to happen. I'm bummed about it. We were, it, it was definitely in the works for a while. We were going to yeah. go. Um, so, would we love to get to the UK? Absolutely. And when we, when, as soon as we know that we are ever going to go out there, which we kind of hope we will eventually, we will let all of you guys know because I'll tell you, it's the UK fans that I've just interacted with on, over the last like three or four years, whether it be with Schmoes or, or being with the AMC days and now Collider, are f- great. So, I, I would love to go over to the UK. Um, now, in regards to Hardcore Henry, I still haven't seen it. I think that. The first issue on the table is whether or not this first-person 
thing is going to become like the new found footage. And I think it is because then you got this other movie, Pandemic or whatever the movie is that's coming out that they're also doing with Missy Pyle and a few other people. And there's, there's, they're going to keep doing it because che- they're cheap to make and, and it's kind of it's it's the flavor of the month. Um, I think that it will come in fast and furious and it'll go out fast and furious. I can't because I don't think people are responding to it the mm-hmm. way that they wanted them to. It works for video games. I just don't think it works for movies. Uh, as as in evidence with Hardcore Henry, the box office wasn't great. Now, do I think that that means that they're going to start using some of that stuff for for actual video game movies? I don't. I think that that's the whole point is they're going to they need to shuffle away from what the video game was and make it and, and structure it in a way that it's a movie now because we haven't had a good mo- video game movie kind of ever unless you want to argue Mortal Kombat mm-hmm. but I don't think this will be a thing that we're going to see in the video game world I think that it's a fad and I think it'll pass well yeah we would love to go to the UK to answer that for other part when you know back in the AMC days like me and John will always talk about like it would be great that if we could tour like the United States or obviously other countries but at this point right now we're kind of We've got so much stuff yeah. going on here. It just doesn't seem possible. Might be some one-offs, you know? I mean, we're going to have our meet and greet at Comic-Con. We'll probably be doing movie talk and TV talk and some of the other shows there as well. But I don't think we, we have it so we can have an audience there right. uh, just yet. We did one in Atlanta last year when we were still with AMC. That was a little one-off thing. But I'd love to do a tour. As far as Hardcore Henry, yeah, I, I haven't seen it yet either. I wanted to see it. But there was two things about it. One, is the first person perspective going to hold up? And then two, motion sickness. I don't want to yeah. sit in a big giant screen and then I'm going to get sick. So I'm going to wait till it goes on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Then I'll watch it. The first trailer I saw before seeing Deadpool and I was so nauseous. And it's like a, a minute and a half trailer. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't look at the screen anymore. Like it was that, it made me that sick. Yeah, well, and imagine yeah. an hour and a half. No, you know yeah. how I am with yes. things like that. You got sick off of Mad Max. Yeah, like and I sat like in the back row. Mm, yes, it, it's, it's, I just, I just can't imagine it holding up, especially when you need to hit an audience of more than just 18 to 22. Yeah. I know it's a lot of, that's, that's, the majority of the demographic that is going to the actual theater, but still, you want to try to reach out. And I know people that are like over thirty. Think, nah, mm-hmm. I'm good. And the movie made only ten million dollars, and I think uh, the company picked it up for ten million. That's yeah. not including marketing costs. So, yeah, that's yeah, it's, it's a bad. tough sell. Too bad. Okay, what's next? Trace writes, "Hey, Collider crew, I was rewatching ET this weekend and noticed product placement in the movie propelled parts of the story forward, rather than just being in there for advertisement. What other movies have there been that include real products that move the story forward?" I mean, I think the easy one is The Fast and the Furious. Every car that you see right. in that movie, for some way, or they're showing off these brand new cars, but there's a reason why because they're either racing or they're the the bad guys got the brand new coolest car, and mm. and here it's all souped up and. It, you know, and I'm sure that so many cars were sold because of the Fast and Furious movie. So to me, that's the one that stands out. I've got two. Uh, You've got mail, which pretty much was a big AOL. promotion for AOL because yeah. that's the only, you know, uh, email client that does that. You've got mail. And the other one is the internship I, with Google. With Google. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing is a Google advertising. Look how cool it is to work here. We're yeah. such a cool company. So those are the two that I can think of. You got any, Sinead? <sighs> Please do not hate me for saying this, Uh-oh. but Twilight mm-hmm. <laughs> had all the Volvos in it, I remember. Mm. And they were like always speeding around their Volvos and Volvo had seen like a great spike in sales Mm -hmm. after the first Twilight movie. Not saying that that's like the greatest thing I can think of, but whatever, Volvo's Twilight, it works. (laughs) Okay, Uh, last one. Jaden writes, hi, my name is Jaden Asi and I'm a big fan, but my question is what movie year was better, 1985 or 2015, let me know. I will tell you that in regards to money, and no question, it's 2015 because of inflation and everything else, and you got Star Wars and Jurassic World and the Avengers, and there's, there's just time to time to time. 85 as far as uh, what came out. Do you have a list there? In yes, front of you? I have a list. Let's, you want me to read the list? Let's hear the okay. list. Um, so 85 was Back to the Future. Great Ooh. one. Breakfast Club. <laughs> was 85? Yep. Goonies, Rocky wow. Four, wow. Pee Wee's Big Adventure, Commando. Witness, Brazil, Cocoon, Weird Science, Fletch, Jewel of the Nile, Mad Max Thunderdome, and Teen Wolf. Damn, Good that's such ones. a great year. Man, okay. And what about 2015? Uh, I have uh, Mad Max Fury Road, mm-hmm. Star Wars The Force Awakens, Sicario, The Revenant, 
The Martian, Inside Out, Yikes. Spotlight, Ex Machina, Creed, Room, Hateful Eight, Steve Jobs, Straight Outta Compton, Avengers Age of Ultron, Ant-Man, <laughs> Mission Impossible, Rogue Nation, Trainwreck, and Spy. That yeah. was all 2015? That's insane. I yeah. can't let nostalgia get the no. better of me. 2015 was the better year. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm going to go with 1985. Really? You think I, that they're better movies? I mean, is I, it because of Goonies? I think it's the nostalgia. It's nostalgia taking I think they're just the... Cla- I think as a whole... Maybe in terms of like... There was more quality in 2015 in terms of the breadth of stuff. But 1985 has more of the... Cla- maybe... Well, you don't know if it's a classic. I know. Maybe 10 years from now, I'll be like, oh, these are classics. Mm -hmm. But right now, like 1985 with just Back to the Future, Breakfast Club, Goonies, Teen Wolf. I mean, those are all timers. Listen, I'm with you. But then you look look at the movies that came out with like with Creed and and Inside Out and Star Wars. And I mean, it's tough. It's tough. I'm I'm not saying it's like a, a blowout. I'm just saying it's it's really close right now. I'm going to get to 1985. Sinead, where are you going? Um, well, I, I think that in terms of like quantity, 2015 obviously seems way ahead because it was all those movies we've all seen and loved and they're all like hits. Um, but in terms of, like, that's such a hard it's question. A tough one. Breakfast Club is like one of my all time favorite movies, like for the rest of my life, um, and Back to the Future, too. Yeah. So, in terms of being like, for life movies, yeah, lifers, classics, 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 like Goonies. We don't know yet. We don't know if right. 2015 any of those movies are going to be classics yet. That's that's a really good question. Yeah. Well, that, what a great year for Michael J. Fox, Back to the Future and Teen Wolf. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, well, he was signed on to Teen Wolf first, I think. Mm-hmm. There's like the whole there's a whole story behind it. But anyway, uh, there you go. That's our show. Thank you for joining us on this Sunday. I would like to thank the modest assassin Dennis Zhang. Where can they find you? Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter at Think Hero, Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. Don't forget, we got Movie Talk tomorrow. We have TV Talk tomorrow. We got uh, Heroes and Jedi Council through the week. We got Return of the Jedi commentary that went up this right. past week. Schmodown, Finstock versus Schnepp. We got a bunch of great stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff on there. And joining us again, it was so nice to have you once again, Sinead DeFries. Thanks for having me. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Sinead DeFries and at that's Sinead.com. And for me, you can find me at Christian Harloff, Twitter and Instagram. And as Dennis mentioned, you can find me every Thursday on Collider Jedi Council. Really great guest. If you're a fan of Clone Wars, we had on Ash- Ashley Eckstein, who plays Ahsoka Tano, as well as James Arnold Taylor, who played Obi-Wan Kenobi. It was a really fun episode. Go check it out. And check us out on Movie Talk tomorrow. And then join us again next week on Mailbag. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.